Hi, this is Jeannie, and this is a Facebook uh, friends video that I made for her um, of how to make my rainbow feather beads. Um, first, you're going to have to start with um, the six different colors of rainbow that have a white core center. So you take some white, make a ball at the end, and encase it in a transparent color, one of the six rainbow colors. Here I am doing purple, and you are going to need all six colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And so I'm just encasing the, the um, transparent over the white, melting it all down, and pretty soon this video will slow down. I'm playing it at fast speed. So now we're slowing down. You want to pull slowly and get nice even stringers all the way across so they're the same size. Plus you want all your stringers of all the different colors to be approximately the same size so that they'll be the same thickness across your bead. Now here's all the stringers plus on the left a little stringer of clear that I use for pulling the feathers. I'm starting with a barrel shaped bead. You can use any shape you wish and I'm using a gray base just so you can hopefully see the colors a little bit better than using a black or a white. I'm pulling the tip off of my red there just to make a nice point at the end so it's tapered. And I'm going to wrap the red one and a third times around the bead. So you'll go all the way around once and then a little bit more, about 25 to 30 percent more around the bead. And this way you'll have even stringers all the way around and you should end up at the other end of the bead when you're on your purple, which is the last color. Okay, so now I'm putting down the orange. Each end of these beads, you want to push a little higher, harder and taper down the edges so that you can overlap it a little bit with the next color of the rainbow. So now that was orange, and now I'm speeding up this video a little more just to save time so I can get in the required 10 minute time limit. And so the yellow is going on now, and now the green, which is a little thick, i got to get that blob off the end and I have to taper it down a little bit because it was a little thicker than the other stringer. But I'm spacing all these colors apart. Here's the blue going down, and I broke it, and I swore a little bit there. But it's going around, and pretty soon it'll be the purple. But I'm spacing these evenly apart with gray showing through the base bead in the center. This is um, so that you can have that separate base color coming through and it shows a neat effect and it separates the rainbows a little bit. You can also put all of these colors together and have them butt up together against each other and have just a solid rainbow across. It's all up to you. So now this is a super fast video again. I'm just melting in all the color all the way across, reshaping into my barrel shape. Now it's slowed down again. I'm taking off that little the little nub of glass I had on there because I don't want it in the way of me pulling out the feathering that we're going to do. So now here comes the feathering. Here's the, the, the clear glass um, stringer I made. I am going to heat straight across from one side of the mandrel to the other all the way across the bead and I'm going to touch it and gently pull across to feather down the color. You can heat it up and redo it just like I did there. Um, if it wasn't quite hot enough or it wasn't um, you didn't pull it enough. So now I'm getting the exact opposite side and I'm pulling down on that side. So now I have one feathering down each side on the opposite end. Now I'm going to pull a feather right between those two. So I'm basically cutting this bead into quarters, putting one feathering down from right to left on each quarter of the bead and you're trying to make these evenly spaced. So that's why it's good to do um, opposite sides first. Now I'm going to change my hand position a little bit and I'm going to pull in between those four quarters in the opposite direction. So now the feather will go the other way. So it's going from the left side of the rod to the right side even though I'm kind of holding it up and down when I do it. Okay, so I sped this up because you pretty much should 
see how this is done from the slower part. But it's the same way, all the way around, splitting each quarter in half. So now I got eight. Four going in one direction and four going in another direction. Now I'm just getting those little ends of the pulls that I just did, of the feather pulls, um, to try to make a nice tapered point at the end of the bead for each of those little feather pulls so it doesn't just all ball up in a big mush at the end, edges of your bead. And here I slowed it down here so you can see the couple of those pulls. So you make nice little skinny pulls. You pull kind of fast so it makes it really skinny and shortens it out. So now you can tap down any remaining glass on the edges if they're sticking out kind of far. You can use a tool or you can marver it. However you feel comfortable, you're just tapping those down. So now I sped up this video part again. I'm just melting it around. I usually heat um, one side at a time and try to get a nice, even taper on one side and then the other side, and then I usually work in the middle. But however you feel comfortably shaping your bead, and you can make it any shape you want. You can make it round or barrel, or it, it doesn't really matter. This will work for basically any shaped bead. And so now here is the bead, but you can see those white edges, or the white, the little white triangles there, um, that was not struck. So you let the bead cool a little bit, and now I'm heating it up again, and I'm re-striking. It was the orange that um, lost its strike, and so now I'm re-striking the bead. Um, so you just let it cool a little bit, and then put it back in the flame, let it get a nice glow, and then you're going to strike the color. As you see there, it looks kind of grayish, but that's the way orange looks. But now you can see the bead struck. So now you can leave the bead like this, if you wish, or you can do what I do, and I like to add a little more shape and a little more dimension to my beads. So I'm going to heat this up, another fast video, just to heat up the whole bead all the way across, and I'm going to squish it to make a medallion type shape. Not quite round, but oval. And there's what that looks like. Now I'm going to heat it, another fast video here. I'm going to heat it all up so that I can get out all the chilled marks and I can round out the bead a little bit um, so it's not so flat. And I am also using gravity, tilting the bead whenever I need to, to try to get the sides um, the same, you know, bowing out the same direction and the same distance just to make it all even. And so that's what I'm doing here. Trying to get it all measured out. And you just heat, you just heat the side you want to drip down. Okay, and so here it is. But as you can see, there's more white. So my orange lost its strike again from when I struck it before. So now I'm going to heat it up again, re-strike the color. And so there it's coming back. There's the re-struck color. Heat it up a little more. I didn't think it was struck quite enough. So I'm heating it up a little more. I'm going to strike it a little bit better here. So you can always put it back in the flame and try to strike it again. Make sure that color comes back. The orange is kind of tough too because it looks pretty faded when you're when you're working with it. But it ends up coming out to be a really nice orange color. As you'll see at the end. I have a picture of the bead at the end. Okay, so now I got it all struck and it looks nice. And I'm going to add some nice clear dots to the top. You can, you can add whatever decoration you want, but um, clear dots added on top of these stripes, it, it magnifies it and gives it some really neat dimension, really neat effects to it. So I like using clear dots. Sometimes I put black dots on black based beads like this. But it just gives it a neat effect having those magnified dots there, especially when they go from small to large, so you get different size magnification on it. It's kind of cool. So I'm almost done with the bead here, and then I have a picture at the end of when it was done cooling. And I kind of show it here, you can kind of see it in a second. I'm checking it out, making sure it's okay, and there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's the finished bead all done, except for not cleaned. And here's a bunch of other beads. You can use rainbows or other colors. It really doesn't matter. Have fun with it. Thanks.